subclinical coccidiosis. There are no obvious clinical signs, but it causes more economic loss than the clinical form of the disease. 16 to 27 percent of adult cattle are infected and act as reservoirs of the parasite, excreting low levels of oocysts. Therefore, most cattle will be exposed to coccidia during their lifetime. Coccidiosis is readily diagnosed in severe acute cases, especially when bloody diarrhea and tenesmus occur. Most often, calves show clinical signs from three weeks of age up to six months. Clinical disease occurs in young animals when they're subject to a massive coccidial challenge and their immune status is compromised by malnutrition, poor colostrum uptake, concurrent disease or environmental stress. The disease is often treated with sulfonamides. Unfortunately, sulfonamides are mainly active on the early stages of the coccidial life cycle, limiting their efficiency as a curative treatment. In less severely affected calves, coccidiosis is more difficult to diagnose purely on a clinical basis. There are numerous other possible causes of diarrhea, both infectious and non-infectious. Subclinical coccidiosis is very often overlooked. Clinical signs are non-specific. Calves may show suboptimal weight gains, have a poor appetite, a dry, rough coat, and show pasty feces from time to time. The prevalence of coccidial infection increases up to the age of 10 months, by which time nearly all calves are infected. Therefore, potentially all calves are at risk of developing subclinical disease. Until recently, the adverse economic impact of subclinical coccidiosis remained unknown. The most frequently used diagnostic test, i.e. faecal oocyst count, has some limitations. The short and variable excretion peak of coccidial oocysts in feces may limit the reliability of dung samples as an aid to diagnosis. Up to 25% of pooled dung samples may yield false negative counts. Therefore, dung sample results must always be evaluated in the context of any clinical signs, farm history, age of calves, nutritional status, vaccine use, and so on. Janssen conducted clinical trials on six farms with a history of coccidiosis problems. In all, 231 calves were involved and split equally between a control and a Vecoxan treated group. 16% of the calves in the control group showed signs of diarrhea, limited to a couple of days, while the remainder of the control group, 84%, showed no clinical signs whatever. None of the clinically affected calves in the control group required treatment. This illustrates how easily subclinical coccidiosis may be overlooked. The lack of growth was unevenly split in the control calves. 39% of the economic losses originated from the 16% of calves with mild signs. 61% of the economic loss was associated with the 84% of the control group calves with no signs of coccidiosis at all. In the 115 animals of the treated group, the excretion of oocysts decreased by 99%. The coxan is effective against all development stages of Ameria species. The growth of the treated calves was 20% higher than in the control group. This proves both the efficacy of Vecoxan and the significant economic impact of subclinical coccidiosis on calf growth. All cattle will face a challenge with coccidiosis at some point in their lives. All farms with a history of coccidiosis and a proven identification of pathogenic coccidia species, Emeria zuernii or bovis, are at risk. Treatment should be either metaphylactic or preventative. Preventatively, the best period to treat must be defined according to the disease history of the farm, so that Vecoxan treatment can be targeted eight days before the expected appearance of clinical signs. Common time points for calves to be affected by coccidiosis are between the ages of four to six weeks, just after weaning, after turnout onto grass, or at housing. Metaphylactic treatment is the ideal, and to simplify the timing of treatment, 
Use Vecoxan as soon as clinical signs appear in the first calf. All calves in the group must be treated with Vecoxan at the same time. Vecoxan is an easy to use product with an excellent safety profile. Vecoxan has a zero withdrawal time for meat. Vecoxan should be administered orally on a single occasion. Vecoxan is the only anticoxidial suspension registered for sheep and cattle. Vecoxan use does not carry any specific precautions concerning the environment. Vecoxan can be administered at the same time as an anthelmintic using a separate dosing gun, thereby decreasing the handling of animals and farmer workload. Once the calves have been exposed to a coccidiosis challenge, they can develop a solid immunity and become resistant to further disease. A trial has proven that animals treated with Vecoxan develop as good a level of immunity as non-treated infected calves. On farms with a known history of coccidiosis, all calves are at risk. The best approach is to treat metaphylactically to prevent outbreaks of clinical coccidiosis and the economic losses due to subclinical coccidiosis. In one single dosing, Vecoxan will help ensure forward growth of the calves and will bridge the immunity gap until the animal's own acquired immunity develops. Subclinical coccidiosis. No symptoms, but 61% of the economical loss.